you, Madam President. It has become customary that when I <clears throat> stand to rebut most bills and motions in the Senate, that I have to be speaking to either an empty opposition side or, as it is now, um, a single member most of the time, and I did raise it before, the leader of opposition business makes his submission um, and for some reason is not available to listen to the response to some of his claims. I suspect he knows why. I will not as uh, assume that I know why he left, Madam President, but that's a pattern. Um, Madam President, during this, this, mo this morning's deliberations, a number of issues were raised and the debate took a certain slant. Unfortunately, we were able to bring some semblance of sanity to the debate, but I need to, for the benefit of this Senate, uh, address some of the issues that came up and hopefully bring some measure of, um, some light, shed some light on them. First of all, Madam President, we need to take note of a tactic or a strategy that the opposition has um, decided that they're going to use. Anytime there is a motion or a bill or a matter on this, on this agenda, the opposition will either decide that it's no good, and if they can't get to that point, they will say that they did it first, so we're only doing what, continuing what they did, so they take credit. And if none of the above works, then they might say it's not enough. We can, you, have to, you have to do more. Um, but today, I think the opposition went beyond all of this. And instead of um, using that strategy, what I suspect happened is that the 505 million narrative had to be brought in this, into the Senate. Somehow, I anticipated it, but it came. And no matter what method was used, it seemed to me that that 505 million was the only thing that mattered in the, in the argument. Well, until I, we heard from Senator Polius, who um, in some ways departed from that, and I think um, I want to commend her for, for doing so. Madam President, that narrative caused us to go into a line of debate and discussion that perhaps robbed us of almost 40 minutes of our debating this morning. But I want to address two things, Madam President. I want to say, first of all, that there is no way we can compare the purpose or the method or the reason for borrowing by our government to what transpired in the last five years. I know there was an attempt to, to put some kind of, um, make some kind of comparison and say, okay, you said we shouldn't borrow, now you're borrowing. That argument has no place in a debate where it is very clear that the focus and the purpose of the borrowing here is in no way related to what was going on before. And so while we, we have acknowledged that governments will borrow, everybody knows that, but I think after the explanation provided and the details given by the Minister for Equity who presented the bill um, in the other chamber, I think the breakdown and the explanations followed by my own explanations this morning would have made it very clear to this chamber that this motion really had a particular focus and it was to assist a particularly vulnerable persons in the wake of COVID. Madam President, we heard from the Senator Polius, I will go to her um, presentation first. She did acknowledge that um, there were several reasons why this motion came to the, to the House, to the, to the Senate, and I, and I acknowledge that. She did acknowledge that in the wake of COVID there were challenges, and that is true. But unlike her two previous leaders, leader of the opposition in the lower house and her leader today in the upper house, she presented a different argument. And her argument was, what about the implementation? That is what we need to know. Now, I mean, now Madam President, before I respond to that, I think it's a legitimate question. I want to ask, 
when we come to this chamber, does the opposition have a position on, on things? Because I listen to the leader of opposition su suggesting that we borrowed 505 million, that we had borrowed it. Then the leader of opposition business in the Senate. Madam President, that I, I am really, really sorry that I have to stand on the point of order to point out that the member is again misleading the House. I have gone through uh, I wasn't great pains to make sure that I did state that I am proposing to borrow. I am not saying that you have borrowed. I said that you propose to borrow. Madam President, I, I wish the member would have allowed me to finish the sentence. First of all, he doesn't seem to acknowledge you. He just stands and talks. I would like to know that when I'm on my feet, if he has a point of order and he stands, you acknowledge and I will sit. Madam President, I will repeat. I will not stand here and say that the leader of opposition business in the Senate said so. I said the leader of the opposition. And if he had just given me a chance, I would have finished the sentence. His political leader in another chamber had to be corrected when he attempted and on his Facebook page the evidence is there to say that we had borrowed 505 million and I'm going to I'm saying that to make a point about contradiction Madam President so his leader did not did not succeed in trying to say that we had borrowed 505 million so the leader of opposition business in the Senate today our my my learned friend is now changing, attempting to change the argument, as he did earlier, to suggest that we are projecting to borrow. So, Madam President, what is the argument? Is it that we have borrowed or we are projecting to borrow? So, you see, when you are not telling the truth, there is no consistency. There you have one leader saying we have borrowed. As they say, we bush him. So he can't come back and say that. So the other leader comes to say we are projecting to borrow. So what exactly are you saying? And even in that argument, we ran into difficulty this morning. So, Madam President, I want to ask the opposition, what is your argument? And if you do not have an argument, then organize your argument. And, and after having heard the two, the two leaders contradicting each other, then the, the other colleague, Senator, takes a different slant and says that it's about implementation. So I have to ask the question, is it about how much we have borrowed? Is it about how much we propose to borrow, or is it about implementation? What is the argument? And so as leader of government business, I'm not even sure whether um, what I'm, I'm responding to, because there's so many different, <laughs> there's so many different arguments. So that is what happens to a, a group when they attempt to mislead, but they can't find something to stick. So they keep shifting the goalpost, shift the goalpost. So one doesn't work, try something else. Some, something else doesn't work, you keep swinging. You keep swinging around. Well, Madam President, what the only swing that matters is the swing that took place on July 21st, 2021. July 26th, 2021. So, Mr. Uh, uh, Madam President, I think the opposition should take note. And as I said earlier, when you were being referred to as Mr. President or Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I did remind the honorable colleague of mine that once he continues along those lines, he will never be able to say Mr. Speaker again. Anyhow, Madam President, one of the arguments, I want to now move to the arguments pro uh, provided by the honorable leader of opposition business who is now in the chamber, so I can now address his issues. Madam President, he did mention that this was a drop in the bucket, I'm quoting him a drop in the bucket. So started by going to the 500 million, it didn't work, so he came back and said, that's a drop in the bucket, that's not enough. 505.2 million US. But Madam President, it may be a drop in the bucket by his standards, because they were not borrowing by um, single digits. It's hundreds of millions. So when we borrow 5.2 million, that ain't nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. You have to borrow half a billion to build an airport. You have to borrow 300 million to do all kinds of things. So 5.2 million, he's not accustomed to that, um, you know, menial amount. So it's a drop in the bucket. But I'll tell you something, Madam President. When they were borrowing, there was no bucket for that particular purpose. 
We are borrowing for a drop in the bucket to assist the vulnerable. But in their time, there was no bucket. And the bucket that was there for the, uh, was it the, the um, fire victims, the, the, the distress fund? That bucket was thrown away. So there was no bucket for the, for the, for the, for the, for the vulnerable. So I can understand why they will come to this Honorable Senate and say that 5.2 million US is a drop in the bucket. Madam President, it will do so much. And as was uh, explained by the, the line minister, a long list of figures and dates and periods of time was presented to explain how many different groups of people this 5.2 million US will touch. And as I did earlier today, I, ex I espouse, I continue to expand on that discussion to explain how many different groups of people that this meager drop in the bucket, 5.2 million US will touch. So it's okay to call it a drop in the bucket. But our bucket is not only for horses and other things that I don't want to go into. It's for people who really need it and real people who have real problems. Madam President, let me just wrap up at this point. I want to say to the Senator Polius, there is only one parliamentary representative for Denry North. I'll repeat that. There is only one parliamentary representative for Denry North, and he happens to be the Minister for Education. I have heard more than once, in fact, there was a time I had to stand and remind honorable members in the Senate that they are not parliamentary reps. And while we come from communities and we are free to make certain comments about our communities, but when I start hearing senators talking about constituency of, I begin to wonder if they have not, you know, if they know their place. Because there's only one parliamentary rep who can come into this house and speak on behalf of the people of Denry North, and that is Honorable Sean Edward. So Madam, Madam President, I come from Deriso, and I can stand up and speak about Deriso, but I can't stand up and speak about Miku South because I didn't win a seat there. And we must accept that we are not spokespersons for constituencies in the Senate. So Madam President, I heard comments being made about um, Denry North and I will represent the, the views of the people. Madam President, in the Senate, our responsibility is to deal with what the lower house sends up to us. And as I said, we come from communities and we may speak about our communities. Nothing wrong with that. There are different communities in, the, in, a, in any part of this country we can speak about. But the connotation of a constituency of Denry North or of Euford South, this kind of approach suggests to me that some of us think that we are, we are MPs. We have no MPs inside here, Madam President. So I suspect, you see, when I came into pol um, politics, I came into politics in opposition. I sat over there and I know how it feels, Madam President. I know how it feels when you try to make a contribution for people on the government side to think that they're there forever and to ridicule you and to tell you you don't have a voice and you don't have a right to speak. I sat there for more than five years, Madam President. So now, some, some people who may have entered in, in, in the grand style when government was Madam government, President, um, and now they are Madam on, President, you know, on the opposite side. Madam President, I stand on a point of order, Madam President. What is your point of order, Senator Polius? Okay. Um, the leader of government business is misleading and inaccurately reporting what I said. I made reference, Madam President, to constituencies when I spoke about the implementation of the social programs, the interventions. When I started my presentation, I did not make reference to uh, being the voice or representing the voices of people from my constituency or from the constituency of Denry North. That is not what I said. So please, can you report exactly what I said and not mislead this house? Thank you. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Madam President. The mic is on, colleague. Oh, sorry. Madam President, I will, for purposes of, she stood at the point of order, but I think it should have been elucidation. Let me elucidate. I am not in any way going to attempt to misrepresent anything that the colleague said. I am referring to a point that was raised where the, my colleague referred to 
um, when she stood, as soon as she stood, um, indicating that she was representing the voice of those who need to be spoken on behalf of. At that point, she didn't indicate Den Renoff correctly. But during her presentation, she sought to make comments about somebody who was fired, I think. But she was not, she was not referring to somebody who was fired, I think. An excavator or someone, yeah. The point is, the person may be from Den Renoff. You may say the person is from whatever community. But I am saying, Madam President, that the role of the person who has a role of speaking about Den Renov is, is supposed to be speaking in the other chamber. That is my point. And in this chamber, there are no parliamentary reps. But anyway, I'll move on. So, Madam President, Madam President, and I suspect it will happen again because it's happened before. So, Madam President, win your seat and then come and talk about Den Renov. Right, right now it's shown again. So, Madam President, um, I want to thank Senator Polius for acknowledging that, um, and she gives quite a few examples, why it is necessary for us to have to pay attention to the plight of the less fortunate and the persons um, who need the assistance. But it's, it's a little strange that just after she says that, um, another argument comes in. But I try to be objective and pick up the essence of the contribution. Um, and I want to end by saying that the opposition um, has indicated, as, outside of everything they said, I think I heard that they support the bill. I think I heard that. And I want to say that if that is the case, um, I applaud that. But while you support something, um, there is no room for you to try to push um, uh, a narrative that was already proven to be wrong by another member and come into this house to sanitize an untruth. And the untruth I was referring to, Madam President, the 505 million that the leader of the opposition in the lower house, the leader of their party, attempted to brunt on Facebook and in the chamber when it was proven wrong, the leader of opposition business in this Senate tried to sanitize it by, by saying that it's not has been borrowed, but is projected. And that too, Madam President, didn't come through. So I want once again to thank my colleagues who um, contributed to the bill, and I look forward to its implementation, as was um, suggested by Senator Polius, that the people who are due to be benefiting will indeed benefit from this motion. I thank you, Madam President.